Hey everybody, hope y'all are doing good. Um, I know it's been a little while since I put a video out. We've been having quite an interesting uh, month or so um, here in Georgia. So, uh, been dealing with some things, but we've got most of it straightened out and organized. So, I'm back with you now. So, got an interesting project. Um, a buddy of mine asked me if I could do something with these. Um, these are the horn or headlight mounts for a 1932 Ford and he doesn't like the coloring on them they're they're pretty nasty looking he wants he's got a really nice chromed and uh, gloss black headlight bucket that he wants to put on it and so he asked me if I could do something with it so that's what we're gonna do it's not gonna be a really in-depth video but um, I do do powder coating um, I have a a larger oven but for something this small I'm gonna show you how to do it with just a regular oven and I'm sure YouTube Academy I'm sure there's tons of these videos this is the way I do it so um, first thing we're gonna do is clean them up I've degreased them and got them um, all the the grease and oil and stuff like that out off of them dried them real good and now we're gonna put them inside the sandblaster and get them blasted so this is my sandblaster um, it's a Dynamo. I, I'm not really familiar with the brand, but uh, a gentleman was selling it really at a really, really good price. And the thing I liked about it was it had really heavy-duty gloves. You can op open the uh, top up here and access it. You can open both sides and access it. So I like that. Um, it has a foot pedal right down here to control the gun so I don't have a trigger inside it that I've got to squeeze. It's got, excuse all the leaves on it, but it's got a uh, air or filter back here for uh, cleaning the air and drying the air as it goes in. At least I think that's what it is. Um, I could be wrong if I am. Hey, y'all tell me. Uh, but it's got a really good light up there at the top. So it does a good job. So you can see one of the uh, brackets is already in there. We're going to put the other one in. Whenever you put something in a uh, sandblast, sandblasting cabinet, think about where your gloves are, where your gun is, and once you get the gloves on, how far you can reach. You don't want to put it you know, way over here in the corner and not be able to reach it. So make sure you put it where your gloves are. It's a dumb, dumb tip, but... Believe me or not, believe it or not, it helps out. So, all right, so we're going to get those sandblasted. So there you go, we've got two parts that are sandblasted really well. Now while I was sandblasting you might have seen me take my thumb and put it over the nozzle or put the nozzle like that where it's up against my um, palm. What I'm doing, my air compressor, or not air compressor, my sandblaster is outside. It's under a shelter but it's still out in the elements. So sometimes the sand particulate that's down here in the, the bottom of the mesh will clump up and it'll stop up the airline. So by putting my thumb over it or my palm, it back purges and blows the, forces the air back out the line and cleans the line out so it'll start working again properly. So, you know, if I had it inside, it might work a little better. I might not have to do that. But because of the setup of my shop, that's what I have to do, so. All right, let's get our parts out. Here's one. And there's two. All right, 
So as you can see, it worked pretty good. They're clean and it appears that even down inside those orifices cleans or the, the gaps there, so that's good. Now you notice I'm not touching them with my bare hands. The reason being you don't want to touch parts that have just been sandblasted with your bare hands. It will the oils in your skin will cause the parts, the bare metal to flash rust and you'll actually see your fingerprints in it. So anytime you sandblast something, you know, use some kind of glove to protect your hand and keep the oils out of it. We're gonna clean these off with some uh, acetone. And once we do that, then we're gonna get ready to spray them with powder and bake them. Okay, so I told you I have a large oven. You can actually see it back there. Um, it is a propane oven. But for small jobs, this is what I use. It's just an electric kitchen oven. Um, I can get small, you know, control arms, pitman arms, um, small fabricated parts, things like that in it. Doesn't take up much room, and it allows me to get the job done fairly quickly without a whole lot of problems. So, um, as you can see, I have removed the eyes out of the top of it, just because I don't want somebody cooking in it because it's got powder from powder coating and stuff like that in it. So this is strictly used for powder coating. So I've heated up to about 475 degrees, um, let it get good and hot. And while I'm doing that, I will start preparing the, the parts. Okay, y'all. So again, with gloved hands, I've wiped the part down with acetone and made sure that all the grime is off of it. Um, there's no debris left from the sandblasting or anything like that. We've got good clean surfaces. And then the next thing I do is I take the grate out of the oven. And as you can see, I've got wires hung from it. So what I'll do is I'll take one of these wires I'll just loop it through one of the holes in the part so that it suspends it. And then I'll take it and I'll hang it from the grate of the oven. Now with this, the biggest thing is to make sure that the part is suspended high enough to the grate that when you put it in the oven, it's still hanging. Um, and it's not touching the, the elements or, or anything like that. So you want it up kind of close to this grate. Um, the reason I do this instead of set it on the grate is if you set it on the grate, you end up with little areas where the grate was touching the metal and it doesn't get good coverage. So you end up having to coat it again. Doing it this way, you have minimal uh, area that's not contacted and so you end up with a better finish on the product. So this is the powder coating kit that I use. Um, I've had it for, I don't know, three or four years. Um, not sponsored by them, but it's an Acewood product. It's their uh, DIY powder coating kit. And like I said, I've had it for a while. I've used it on several projects, and it does a really good job. It's simple. It's not as expensive as one of the, the big industrial kits, but I don't do that much industrial you know, work. I don't, I don't do any big products, so this does just fine for me. When you get the kit, it's got the, the box there. It comes with the gun. Let me see if I can get a little closer. So it comes with the gun. To disperse your powder, there's this tip on the end of it. And you can slide that tip forward or back. And that will allow a larger or wider pattern with more powder or a narrower pattern with less powder. Um, your bottle or 
of uh, medium or powder will screw onto this and be siphoned up through the tube here. Of course, the trigger to blow air through it, you do have to put an air hose to it. And you want to run it on low air. It's, it's just like painting. You want a very low, lower air pressure so that you don't blow the powder out and waste it. You want to control it as much as possible. So if I remember right, it's 8 to 10 PSI somewhere in there. Um, I have to double check before we shoot, but I, th I want to say that was correct. So you, when you get ready, you uh, attach your canister to the bottom here, hook up your airline, you have a negative ground that comes off of the power box down here and it comes up and you clamp it to the grate or to the wire that's holding your part. What that does is negatively charges the part that's being suspended and then you've got a button right here that when you get ready to spray you hold this button down pull the trigger and spray and apply your powder and by pressing this trigger it positively charges the powder that's being sent through the gun so it attracts it to the metal and gives it really good adhesion the only problem you run into is you have to be in somewhere that's doesn't have a lot of crosswind and when you go to move it from your work area to the table or to the oven you don't want to bump it because if you do you stand a chance of knocking the powder off of it so you have to be a little careful there but otherwise it it does a pretty good job all right so i've got the powder hooked up this is a high gloss black i've got my air hooked up i've turned it down we're getting ready to spray As you can see, it leaves quite a mess, but we got really good coverage on our parts. So we're ready to put them in the oven. As I said, we're gonna be really careful about not bumping it too much. Slide them in. Shut the door. So we'll let this go for a little while, about 10 minutes or so, and then we'll come in and we'll check the temperature on the parts. And if everything's looking good and the temperatures are heating right, you can actually see the, um, the powder when it gets to the point where it's starting to melt. It'll actually um, kind of liquefy and you can kind of see it run out. So that's what we're looking for. And We'll let that start happening. We'll check the temperatures to make sure it's at the right temperature to cure, to heat and cure. And then we'll bake it for the appropriate time and then we'll pull it out and let it cool. All right, you can see how they're getting glossy. It looks like they're wet. That means the powder's flowing. We got about 10 more minutes. Let's see what we got. said you want to be real careful not to bump it. Granted the powder has baked. But you still
still don't want to bump it too much and you want to make sure your path is clear to where you're going to leave them to cool. There are times I'll leave them in the powder coating oven to cool, but for this one I'm going to pull them out. I'm going to set them right there and let them cool there and then we'll bring you back and show you the finished product. Alright y'all, there they are. Finally cooled down. There's a little bit of trash, I'm not sure about that. But the powder that I have is about a year and a half old and they say you're not supposed to use it after a certain period, so I don't know. I think they'll turn out fine for what he wants, so there we go. Hope y'all are having a good night.